Hey, everyone. Let me know when you're here because I can't tell. I'm on StreamYard. It never lets me know. Okay. Now I can see your comments. We are just hanging out here at the house today. We, If you saw my post from last week, we spent Thursday and Friday in the emergency room. And we're home. We, he did see the doctor today, our doctor. And um, he may be going in for surgery. So that'll be good times. <laughs> anyway, so as a follow up to my pepper discussion, some of the questions that I got, I didn't get a, a ton, but um, one of the questions was how long do peppers last? The pepper pods, the dried peppers, you know, you want to use them within the year, but a year, in here, after a year, they really start to get stale. But as long as you're, you know, have them in like an airtight container kind of thing. These are saison containers, like the spice saison. So that is how I keep them. Hi, Sandra. Thank you for joining me. So that's how I keep my dried peppers. As soon as I open up the bags, I pour them in there. I really need like two or three of those containers. That's how many peppers I keep. I have some in bags. I'm trying to think. I should probably bring up that little thing with questions. Um, yeah, sometimes... And you can make your own chili powder with these. You just have to take off the stem and take out all the seeds because the seeds are super, super bitter. Hi, Laura. But most of the time, I just do it where I toast them, put it in the boiling water and soak it, and then grind it down and strain it. Um, old habits. <laughs> I like it that way. Actually, I'm getting ready to do another canning project that I do that again. Hi, Linda. Thank you. We're hoping he feels better soon, too. Hi, Connie. Sandra, what are salty? Oh, the seasoning blends? Yes, seasoning blends can be salty. But you can definitely grind those. If you have a high-powered a high powered grinder, you could definitely grind those. These don't work well in a coffee grinder. I can tell you that for from experience. The little coffee grinders don't work. Yeah. Get it yourself a high-powered grinder. I tried to grind those in my little... I had a um, little coffee grinder. It was a Mr. Coffee. And it would do great with seasonings, except it didn't with the pepper pods. Hi, Cam, 1968. Okay, blender. Yeah, blender would work. He isn't doing better yet. Um, so we thought it was kidney stones. It ended up being gallbladder stones. And in the ER, they said that a stone hasn't blocked the duct causing pancreatitis. So he wasn't going to take him to surgery since his duct wasn't blocked, but it's still causing a ton of pain. So we did see our doctor today and our doctor is sending him to a surgeon. So he will probably end up getting his gallbladder out. So nothing super serious, but of course it's painful and not fun to go through. And he's a bear to deal with. Let me tell you, he's on a no fat diet. Oh my gosh. What do I feed him? I still don't know. I made him grilled chicken with barbecue sauce and I did, and they did it in the air fryer, the air fryer grill. And then I did um, some grilled, some, some vegetables in the air fryer. He doesn't like vegetables. Yeah, yeah. So he's in a ton of pain. But I just, I am out of ideas on what to feed him. Can't He can't eat butter and anything. He can't eat any, he can't even eat good fats. He can't eat 
avocado oil, avocados. Yeah. He's eating apples, bananas. He's eating that stuff like it's going out of style because it's the only thing he really likes. I made him white rice today with his chicken, but he didn't want any vegetables. So there's that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so we've already had two emergency room visits and one doctor's visit. So um, we'll see. We shall see. He's in so much pain, he can't even stand it. And he's driving me insane. I can't get anything done around here. I've tried to go to the grocery store all week and I haven't made it there. And I did grocery delivery because I wanted to order more of these. This is the reason I want to go to the grocery store. I wanted more of these containers. Um, I'm pantry organizing and I want to more containers for dry pastas. So I did an uh, Instacart order and they brought me all the wrong containers. They brought me Rubbermaid, some Rubbermaid containers that are like for leftover size, not that size. Ugh. So I haven't even made it there. And in the emergency room for two days took its toll on me. Oh my gosh, I was exhausted. At least he got to lay in the bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And the, the worst part is the Thursday night we went to the emergency room here by our house and it was horrible. There was 50 people in the waiting room and people were coughing everywhere. And I thought, oh my God, we're going to get even sicker in here. <laughs> we were there eight hours in the waiting room. They did all his tests, but they never called his name to take him back. And two o'clock in the morning, he, we, were, we were so tired. He finally said, I can't do this. We're gonna have to come back tomorrow. So we went home and then Friday, early afternoon, I took him to um, the ER in Scottsdale where we usually go. So we went to North Scottsdale and um, we were there about five hours in the waiting room and they had about 30 people in their waiting room. And they said, well, it's been really busy. We can't get caught up. And so then they finally got him back and gave him something for pain. Hi, Linda. Four recipes today. Holy moly, you're a busy chick. Oh, chicken burrito, chicken nugget. Yum. Those are some of my faves. <laughs> I've got more of those kind of things coming your way. I've written uh, more recipes. And I am really trying hard to get this cookbook done with these. But I'm trying to put the canning recipes in there and also put recipes for using them in there. So once you make them, you know how to use them. Oh, yeah, Linda, he says, I've never had a gallbladder pain, but um, he is in so much pain. He can't stand it. Oh, he threw up. That's why That's why I hauled him into the emergency room. Thursday morning, he got up. He was going to go to work. He got in his work truck, started driving, turned around and came home. I was still in bed sleeping. And he said, oh, I can't. I can't do this. And he threw up and he was throwing up blood. So not only does he have a gallbladder issue, but he's overdone it with um, ibuprofen and Aleve. So he's created a bleeding ulcer in his stomach. So he has that on top of the gallbladder. So now he can take nothing but Tylenol. Threads and jars, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah, I hope they can do laparoscopic, but we'll see. Whatever they've got to do to get it out. So he goes in Friday morning to see a surgeon. My concern is what if it's getting infected and getting bigger? Yeah. While we're waiting this long. Oh, it, it, well, he's, they've given him nothing for pain. So all he can take is Tylenol. Like Tylenol doesn't help anything. Um, the ER doctor did give him muscle relaxers to relax his back because his back is spazzing out around all the, uh, the pain he's having. <laughs> so, um, that helps him a little bit too. 
Oh gosh. Don't tell me that. <laughs> I, I feel like we are in the same situation. They're just dragging it out. Meanwhile, he's getting fr frustrated. He doesn't feel good. He's laying down a lot, but, you know, then he's not really tired. And he's got, so he gets up and walks and he just paces back and forth in the house. Oh, yeah, they the ER doctor told him he should get, he needs an, he needs endoscopy because of the bleeding ulcer that he now has. He went through an entire bottle of Aleve in one week. Oh, by the way, you know, he needs his knee replaced. So he's waiting on a knee replacement. And I took him a week before all this started to get a cortisone shot in his knee. And then he needs a tooth that needs to come out. So he had tooth pain and then he's had two surgeries on his shoulder and it's still really painful. So, uh, and he's constantly climbing up ladders on the roofs because he is an electrician that specializes in solar. So He's got all this body pain and he's still working and doing all this stuff. And, oh, so he was like hitting the, a leave hard trying to get through his work day. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's terrible for you to take that much, but he's, I said, he, he doesn't realize it because he's not a medical person and he just it knows that he's in so much pain it's hard to get through the day. So he was, I'd give him the appropriate amount if I gave it to him and I'd say, here's two. And he'd say two, that's not going to do anything. And he dumps it into his hand and takes a handful. So he did cause a bleed. So now he's got to take protonics and um, again, low fat diet protonics. He's got to be really careful. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's a good idea to lean over the back of a chair. Right now, he leans over into my fist. <laughs> he says, can you put your fist right here? So I sit there with my fist right here, and he leans into it. Oh, yeah, that stuff's terrible for you. Yeah, Tylenol's hard on your liver. The other one's hard on your kidneys. They gave him some GI cocktail too when we were in the ER and it had um, lidocaine in it and it numbed his throat all the way down. He wasn't a fan. <laughs> but he felt a little better when they gave him that and then they gave him some pain meds in the ER. So we were able to come home that night. But Indian ghost pipe? No, I've never heard of that. Is it a medicine? Is it an herb? He wandered outside to hang out with a friend. Huh. Holistic. Okay. Nope. I have no idea what that is. Will it cure his gold stones? Pain relief. Okay. I will have to look into it. Hmm. Is it in pill form or is it like in tea form? I'm going to look it up. Okay, so it looks like a very white plant. They're rare. I don't know, it looks like a 
Pretty rare find. Where to buy? Tincture. On eBay, I don't know. Huh. Okay, well, I will look into it a little bit more. He's already like, can't you make tea for this? <laughs> like, I don't have anything in my uh, cupboard that would is strong enough to help his stuff. Yeah, I'll have to look into it. You okay? Yep. Okay. Wandering. Okay. Well, hopefully this problem will get taken care of soon. So he's out. He's home all week. And then we'll see what he, the surgeon says on Friday. In the meantime, I'm rearranging my pantries. And I did several videos. And by the way, I did buy a new camera, but it was used. And I recorded two canning videos, and neither one of them recorded at all. It said on there that it was recording. And the playback worked, but then when I put the card in, it was empty. I was so upset. Uh, so one of them I'm going to refilm soon. The other one I'm not going to refilm for a little while. The um, the Italian beef, it's going to be a little while till I refilm it. Because I don't think I need, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I don't think I need like 19, 20 pints of that. So that sucks. I'll tell you, when it rains, it pours. My ring lights... One burnt out, and the other one has a short in it. Oh, and now my website that I put my recipes on, for some reason I can't sign into it. I um, I got to call them. I did try to do the online help thing, and that didn't work out. So now I have to call WordPress. So weird. Like when something starts, it just seems to snowball. And it started with my camera not working. And then I broke my... Um, my um, backup camera, the one that I started YouTube with. So that one is not working anymore somehow. Yes, the recent video was from the little camera that was my backup camera, but that one isn't working now. It is dead. And then, um, so I've been trying to film on my phone, which is a pain in the butt because I don't have a good phone stand. And so I'm holding it to do it. And then I have to email them one by one to my, um, or airdrop them to my computer, which is a pain in the butt to do them one by one. But it's what I got to do for right now until I can get my new one working. It's a Sony. It's a nice camera. I'm sure I'm doing, I'm sure it's me and I'm doing something wrong. I just don't know what. But I got to figure it out. I've been trying to finish this sewing video for my sewing channel and I have not had a good camera to get it done with. So I have pieces. The rest of the pieces cut out up here and waiting. Tech stuff. Something I'm not great at. So Robert plugged the Sony in, tried to figure it out. Couldn't He couldn't figure it out either. So I guess it's not just me. Yes, Linda, sometimes I do make tamales. I used to make them every November because they're my son's favorite, so I would make them for his birthday. Christmas, I don't make them because all the neighbors in the neighborhood bring us tamales in December. 
So I don't make them because that would be like an overabundance. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying, Sandra. I'm waiting for everything to just kind of even out and get better. I, some, I think someone cursed my tech equipment. <laughs> And Linda, sometime I'll do a tamale video and make a small batch. They are my husband and my youngest son's favorite thing. So my youngest son always requested on his birthday. So I made him for years on his birthday since he was like 10. And then his wife started making them for him. Because um, when she was growing up, her mother had a tamale business. So she loves to make tamales. So she started making them for his birthday. So we'll, I'll have to bring her over and we'll have to do a tamale video. Especially now since I have a bunch of canned pork. Be even easier with home canned meat. Oh no, another lost dog. Did you guys have any questions about the previous video I did? The peppers and the oregano. I get so many questions about it. Oh, and somebody did send me a question on that pepper video. Hey, Beth. And they asked if you have to pressure can hatch peppers. Of course, if it is you, you have to pressure can them. Um, they are low in acid. No, okay. Oh, good. Mexican oregano makes all the difference in the flavor of your product. Linda, you don't really want to learn how to make tamales? Okay. Okay. Beth, he, um, he went to see the doctor today and they're sending him to a surgeon. He sees the surgeon at 7.30 uh, Friday morning. Connie, you will, you will love the way your food tastes with the Mexican oregano. I love Mexican oregano so much. I just put it in chicken broth without the other stuff sometimes just for the flavor. So hopefully they'll set him up for surgery and get that out and so he can start to heal and stop being in pain. Hi, girl next door. Next doorable, sorry. Kelly, I will I will do that sometime. Actually, that might be a good summertime project. So we've got, you guys been keeping up with the pies of March and the marching in with casseroles? <laughs> well, Connie, when your daughter tastes the oregano, she'll notice the difference. <laughs> There's definitely a difference. 
Nice. I have to, what day is today? Oh my gosh, my video is supposed to go up tomorrow. I didn't realize this. I didn't do it yet. <laughs> I'm terrible. I was trying to do it earlier in the week or last week. So I have to make my pie tonight, I guess, for tomorrow. April, I'm trying to figure out what collabs we have coming up in April. I got invited to a couple, but I never said if I was going to be in them or not because I'm still not sure. My memory is kind of crappy right now. I keep forgetting stuff. And even though I do write stuff down, I set timers, it doesn't always help, unfortunately. And so I was supposed to be in the chili collab. I totally bombed that. That's the first one I've ever screwed up. And um, anyway, I didn't get my video up until the March and it was supposed to be in February. <laughs> so I don't know. Sorry, I'm reading, getting lost. Oh, I, I always had a really good memory until this, and now I don't. Um, two weeks ago, I left my burner on with a cast iron skillet on there, and I left the house, went and got my nails done. I uh, took my granddaughter to lunch. My husband came home at some point during the pan on the burner. When I got home, he was like, did you forget something today? I'm like, I don't know. What did I forget? <laughs> it's like he left the burner on. And let me tell you, when I left my burner on, I have a gas stove. So I'll have to guess my gas stove on with an iron skillet on top of it. And I left the house. That on that That's the first time I've left the house like that. But I have left it on all day and just, you know, was like cleaning and doing, doing my stuff. And he's gotten home from work and said, how long has this burner been on? I'm like, it's not. And he said, yes, it is. <laughs> so he said, you're going to burn down our house. I've left the oven on. Um, I left my, several times now I've left my hair straightener on. And if you know what hair straightener is, those things are hot ceramic. And I've left them sitting on my counter burning up. Oh yeah, I saw that uh, Mennonite farmhouse. Leanne made pecan cheesecake. Actually, my mom makes a pecan cheesecake, but she makes pecan cheesecake and it, there's no crust. So it's like pecan pie with the cheesecake layer in the middle, but somehow cake on the edges. Yeah, there's been a lot of great pies on there. So I guess I will be filming mine tonight still. I try to do that too, Karen, and I don't know. Either I'm not really doing it and I think I'm doing it, or I'm not seeing it or noticing it. I don't know. It's really hard to say. I also get lost. I'll leave the house. No, oddly enough, Connie, it didn't even ruin my pan. Um, my iron skillets, the one that you guys see me use all the time, those iron skillets are older than my mom. They came from my great-grandmother. They're completely smooth. You know, they're they're probably, I don't know, 70, 80 years old. And it didn't wreck it. Didn't burn it up. The pie I'm going to make. Oh, you know what I'm going to make? I'm going to make Depression Era oatmeal pie. That's what I'm going to make. I was trying to think of, you know, something savory. And then I realized... There are so many savory pies this time that I was like, okay, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to do a Depression Era recipe. And everybody's already done the hot water pie, so I'm doing the oatmeal pie. Yeah, it, it'll be good. I always think of oatmeal as a... Um, a dessert rather than breakfast. I don't know why. 
I keep it in my baking pantry because I think of it as more a dessert item anyway. So I guess I better get that done tonight. Um, you mean in the, have I seen, I've seen medieval pie recipes. Yes, I have meat pie recipes and I make meat pie recipes too. I don't know if anybody's ever, or any of you have ever watched my, I did a, um, pork pie recipe. Oh, yeah. I saw her um, meat pie. She did the Canadian um, meat pie. Canadian, French Canadian meat pie. Um, I forget what she called it. Beth, I remember you saying that. Um, though her meat pie was like solid meat. She had like ground turkey and the ground beef in it. And it was like a solid ground meat pie with some shredded vegetables, which I think was great. It was a good video. And she put a good amount of seasoning in it. So I thought that was good. Kelly, forgetfulness is normal as you age. I mean, you know, and then as we go through menopause too, but I, I, I'm having even more than that because I had a little bit of forgetfulness before it happened, a little bit, but not like this. And when I realize I'm doing something wrong or I'm in the wrong spot, I panic. So like when I'm driving, I've gotten lost a few times now, which now I don't want to go anywhere without Robert because I try to drive and then I'm like, look up and I'm like, oh my God, where am I? Or I, th I think I'm on one road and I'm on a complete different, which is stupid because we are on a grid system. It's really hard to get lost here. So and then I get all panicky and thinking, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Connie, there's, there's vegetables in there. She grated a carrot and a potato and put it in there. Rewatch the video. Sandra, I know. I um, but I feel like I feel like, you know, it's been seven months and everything should be completely back to normal again. And I'm flustered because it's not. Or what if this isn't normal? What if this is now my new normal? That's that's what I'm afraid of. But whatever. Whatever it is, it is. And I must be worse than I even think I am because my daughter treats me like I'm an old people. And... She watches me like a hawk. <laughs> Anytime we go anywhere, she grabs my arm like I'm going to fall over or something. I'm like, you know, I'm fine. I inherited a new mother. <laughs> Who is my daughter? Then she comes over on the weekend and she like checks all my meds. Do you need meds? I'm like, no, I'm fine. Jeez. <laughs> Are you taking these blood pressure pills? Yes. <laughs> It is, but it makes me feel weird. Uh 
<laughs> I'm trying. The forgetfulness is my only issue right now that I that I know of. <laughs> she does. She's so worried. I think the the brain surgery like put her on a different level of worry. So I think that's what her deal is. But we shall see. So I just hope you all know that I'm not forgetting things on purpose and, you know, like not putting videos out or if I say I'm going to do something, eventually I'll remember and get it done. But sometimes it takes me a little bit longer. Everything takes me longer now. I don't do anything fast anymore. <laughs> uh, thank you, Beth. Yeah, yeah, and there is some atrophy. You know, I'm 10 years post-menopause. So um, there's some of that in there as well. And then the brain surgery on top of it. I don't know. A crazy diagnosis, you mean the brain aneurysm? Because that I've known about for 17 years. It wasn't anything new. I'm just lucky because guess what? They found my brain aneurysm and they watched it and then they fixed it before I could die from it. Uh, most people that have brain aneurysms, gosh, a good portion of people die from that. So I'm very lucky. <laughs> Me too. I was so worried about it because I'm like, great, my grandkids are little. And my kids are my kids aren't super young, but they're still young, you know what I mean? My daughter will be 33 in May. What? Okay, come on. You're a little bit spoiled, huh? So yes, I'm thankful that I was able to do that. And I'm so thankful that I had the surgeons that I did. Everything couldn't have gone better. So I'm not complaining at all. Yes, I am. I, and I feel like it. Plus, physically, I did heal pretty fast. My hair grew back super fast. You can't even tell. Yeah, I'm a lot slower now than I ever was. I'm sure aging has something to do with it. I feel my age, definitely. I might not look it, but I feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> but I feel like as long as I'm getting stuff done, who cares? I can't get up early anymore. I cannot do mornings. I'm not a morning person. Hi, Charlie. So my husband... He, was it yesterday? I was like, I'm going to go in my sewing room. I'm, tr I'm cutting out a new um, quilt. So I'm cutting out all the pieces. And I'm going to spend the day in my quilting in my uh, sewing room. And he says, it's 1.30. The day's over. And I'm like, it's just beginning for me. <laughs> oh, Charlie, yes. She's always... I, have, I should probably get a little doggy pouch for this one, let me tell you. She thinks I need to hold her all the time. <laughs> yeah, they are always searching for food, waiting for me to drop something. And then there's this one who just wants to be held constantly. I 
and she sits and cries and cries and cries until I pick her up. Yeah, she is. She is five pounds, but you, um, she doesn't know it. We didn't tell her. She doesn't know. She thinks she's a big doggy. And I'll tell you what, chihuahuas would be dangerous if they had any size to them because she thinks she's the boss around here. And everybody just listens to her. <laughs> so she's a chihuahua mini pin. But she patrols the neighborhood. She has to watch out the window so that she can make sure she yells at whoever comes in her cul-de-sac. <laughs> Right? I agree. Yeah, she's pretty darn bossy. And then she's mixed with Chihuahua, so she's very territorial. She thinks she owns me. She probably does. We're lucky she lets us live in her house. This is her favorite room, oddly enough. If we're busy out there and I look at her and I say, hey, do you want to go so? She heads right for this room. <laughs> There's, They have beds in here, but under the table, this cutting table, she pulled all of my, um, not all of it, but some of the fleece that I have, she pulled it down under there. So she's made herself a little nest. It's her own little cave. So she's the only one who can squeeze back there. She gets up down there and sleeps. Sometimes at night I can't get her out of there to come to bed. She'll sleep under that table all night long in her little nest she created. <laughs> it's her own private den. So when I sew, she hangs out under there. Yeah, she's pretty smart. And she listens really well, actually. She's a really good girl. She knows exactly what I'm saying to her. Yeah, Sharon, you're right. <laughs> I share with her. I'm just lucky she lets me do stuff in here. Who's that? Somebody running a lawnmower in your neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, they bark too. They all bark. But they're pretty good, so once you tell them to stop, most of the time they do. Sometimes if there's a lot going on, they won't. <laughs> I know in some of my videos you hear them. For the most part... I think they're pretty good during videos because um, I have six of these guys running around. So I'm doing videos with six little barkers. So I think for the most part, they're pretty darn good. What's dad doing in there? Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like a weed whacker or lawnmower or something. Somebody's doing their front yard. Oh. What's up? Um, just life, you know. <laughs> Robert may be having his gallbladder out. We'll see. He's got an appointment with the surgeon on Friday. Um, I've got several new canning recipes. Oh, I do have news for you guys. Okay, I'm going to put you down. Go through Eddie's one over there. Okay, so I have, new, I have big news for you guys. This summer, I am going to be driving across the country. I want to leave here July 1st. Um, I'm going to be driving to Michigan, but I'm driving completely across the country. I'll head north once I get to, I don't know, 
wherever the 75 is. I got to map it out. Anyway. So I was thinking about turning it into more of a, you know, along the way, do like meeting spots. If any of you guys would be interested, I don't know if any of you are near the highways. I can't look. I don't even, I don't, I should have brought it up before I even said anything. But anyway, um, let's see. I can't think of the name of the highways. Why don't I know this? I know them around here, of course. Can I make this any bigger? Okay, anyway, I'm driving across, yeah, probably on the I-70. Because <sighs> right here, we're, we, have, we take the 17 and then we go the 40. But I don't know what the 40 changes into on the east side. But along the highway, if any of you are in cities near there and would like to meet, I totally am up for doing meetings, um, email me. Email me so I can map it out and map out meeting spots because I think that would be so fun. Charlie, where are you at? What state are you in? Well, girl next door, well, sorry. I'll see you next time. Georgia. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be down in Georgia. South Carolina. Okay. I don't know if I will go as far as the Eastern States. Oh, yeah, Florida is a little, little out of my way. Another time, though, for Florida and those states. Definitely. In the sticks. I love the sticks. Tani, Missouri. I probably will be going through Missouri. And you know what? Here's something funny. As you guys know, I've been kind of looking at different places to live. And I... I um. Tama, I'm come I'm coming to Michigan. Um, in Missouri, I keep finding all these old Victorian houses, these historical houses, and I keep thinking, oh, I want to I want to buy a Victorian house and re you know remodel it. <laughs> and Missouri keeps popping up. Kansas, I might be coming through Kansas up that once we hit o Oklahoma and turn and go up. Yes, I didn't even know that. Kansas City, wow. Yeah, so I keep looking at those and I just keep finding a bunch of them in Missouri. Charlie, uh, we're thinking about it. It's because even though we love Arizona, I absolutely love it here, and it will be sad when we have to move. But the water isn't isn't going to last. It's not going to hold out. I'm I'm thinking about the future, and I'm smack dab in the middle of the city. I have a yard, no acreage, and of course, because I'm in the middle of the city, I don't own my land. I'm on city land. My house is on city land. C 
Susan, I'm not sure yet. It has been about 10 years since I drove across the country the last time. Well, no, I can't say that. I did drive to Minnesota in 2019. Robert and I went to Minnesota. Well, that's not completely across the country, but it's pretty, pretty long drive. Uh, Magoo, actually, you know what? Want to hear the funny story? I was actually going to move to Kentucky, and it was either Kentucky or here, and then I ended up here, which I'm kind of glad because I met my husband here. But yeah, I love Kentucky. Yes, I would like a couple acres. Um, I kind of want to build like a, a family compound area where I'd have enough land for the kids to build their houses. Yes, water is an issue here. It is not going to hold out. Um, I'm worried that they're going to start, you know, monitoring the water and saying, oh, you only get this much, you know. And we have a pool, so that would suck. Susan, oh, okay. Yeah, if you're on the 17, you did pass me. I am right off the 17. Anna, you just moved to Kentucky. That is awesome. When I'm canning, I use water? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I would never live in Vegas, but Vegas is in the same pickle we are about, about the water. And we share water with Vegas. We both get our water from Lake Mead, which gets it, it from the Colorado River. And Lake Mead is so far down, it's insane. They're finding bodies in barrels <laughs> from the old mobsters. And gross, we're drinking that water? I know it's filtered, but still, a thought. Connie, have a good night. Thanks for coming. Yeah, so we're looking, and we're looking at moving back east a little bit. Um, Robert doesn't want to live anywhere there's snow. He really does not like the cold. I mean, I don't like the cold either, but... I work from home now, so I don't have to leave the house. Charlie, you are right about that. Well, Tracy, let me tell you. If people from out west here moved there and thought they got a great deal for a house, it's because they did. Do you know our housing prices out here? <laughs> our housing prices are insane out here. I mean, I think we're getting high here in Arizona, but go to California. Holy moly. Georgia is beautiful. I've been through Georgia many times. Uh, spent the night in jail there once. <laughs> Valdosta. Makes me cringe every time I think about it. <laughs> I was a kid, 21. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> 21. 21 year olds do stupid stuff. Yes, prices are getting ridiculous in Colorado as well. I'm sure it's getting ridiculous everywhere, but I'd like to sell my house while it's up and go pay a lower price somewhere else with some land that I could settle on and stay there for the rest of my life because I'm getting older. I can't keep moving. <laughs> We've been in this house for 15 years. 14 years, something like that. Colorado is too cold. I can't move there. It's too cold. Too much snow.
You live on a mountain? Wow. Actually, here in Arizona, you can buy a house on a mountain and have your own mountain. <laughs> Charlie, I'm right there with you. I can't either. In fact, I think you've caught several of my misspelling mistakes. <laughs> But yeah, I need some place with land and some place that's not going to run out of water. And anywhere I move over to that side, I'll be closer to my family because my whole family lives in Michigan. My parents live here. They moved out here to be near us, so it's going to suck when they have to move again, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Plus, wherever I go, my kids are coming and my grandchildren. So I need someplace where my grandchildren will be safe because, you know, I grew up in Michigan in the country. I was safe there. We played outside all the time. Here, you can't do that. And Arizona's getting worse. So we live in Phoenix. I live smack dab in the middle of Phoenix, right? And our neighborhood has been quiet and safe all these years. Now, all of a sudden... When I was in Michigan a couple weeks ago, Robert called me and said, hey, you're never going to believe this. Two o'clock in the afternoon, some people came in with a U-Haul and stole all the packages off everybody's doors, pried open all the mailboxes and stole their mail, and then opened up any car doors that were unlocked and stole everything out of their car. My kids live just at the end of the cul-de-sac, and they opened up his work truck and stole his gas card. So... Um, they opened up my husband's work truck, but he said they opened up the wrong side. He said if they would open up the other side where all my power tools are, but they opened up the side where he just keeps his lunchbox and his shoes and all that stuff. So he got lucky that none of his stuff got stolen out of his truck. But the neighbors, that got all their packages stolen. We didn't have any packages in front at that point, so we didn't get anything stolen. But if you watch the video, because we have cameras all over our house, they had gone to, to the side of the house where the fence is so they couldn't get into the backyard. And Robert was in the backyard and the dogs were barking because they were they knew that guy was out there. And he was looking all on the side of the house where Robert keeps all of his tools to you know try to steal something. And Robert yelled at the dogs and said, stop barking. And he heard that and ran. And Robert saw that on the cameras. But by the time he got out there, they were in their U-Haul and gone. So kind of makes me worried, you know, if now people are so bold that they're coming into the neighborhoods and stealing. Oh my gosh, that is scary, Charlie. Were you driving and you were at a, you were stopped and someone tried to get in your car? Or they thought you were, or you were parked and they didn't know you were in there. That's crazy. That is scary. Very scary. See, it's everywhere, I think, too, you know? I mean, it's worse in big cities, but. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That is freaky. Sandra, you're right. People are crazy. And they're getting more bold. And as things get tougher for our economy, people are going to get more bold. Oh, <laughs> Anna, that's awesome. Like My neighbor, actually, he's the one making all the noise. He's right there weed whacking. And um, I can reach out my window and shake hands with my neighbors <laughs> in their driveway. We're that close crazy but again I'm right in the middle of the city so I don't want to be in the middle of the city anymore I do love that I have all these grocery stores available but soon you know if you know what's coming down the pipe if you've been watching the news I don't know what they're gonna have left yeah it's just gonna get worse people are gonna get more desperate and what's next break-ins I'm worried about it 
Oh, geez, Sandra, that is so scary. That's my worst fear right there. Worst fear, hands down. Yeah, Beth, I hear you. We have kind of all been prepping like that for years, but... Oh. Still scary. We're still going in the wrong direction. And if you've been watching the news and you know what's going on with the money, with the U.S. dollar, we're in real trouble here. Real trouble indeed. So yes, prepping is one thing, but also trying to keep everything that you've got and move yourself to a safe place. Georgina, that's a great idea. I just want to get out of the middle of the city. But I figure if I'm going to move again, I don't want to just move again here and then wait a couple more years and then have to move because there's no water. <laughs> But that's a great idea about the doors. We have cameras literally all over the place here, but What good is it going to do if it's just me during the day by myself? Am I going to go out there <laughs> and confront them? <laughs> do you know how long the police take to call when you call them? Do you know how long they take to get here? Whew. It's a long time. Plus, if things get really bad, how are they even going to help everybody? Very soon, Robert's going to have to find something to do from home. <laughs> hmm. So, things to think about. If you're in a big city, where do you want to move to? Bricks and Beauty Homestead, thanks for coming. Have a great rest of your night at work. Yes, Beth, I agree. I think it's going to come to that for everybody. And Arizona has great laws when it comes to defending yourself. I don't know about other states. Though, I wish it wasn't. I wish our water situation was better because I'd stay here forever if it was. Ingo. He was getting too close to the window, and I can see dust and dirt flying. <laughs> oh, the night shift, yeah. Georgina, uh, yeah, I actually have a permit. I carry. I've been, I have for years. And yes, we have, um, we train, we, I shoot for target practice. He is. So yeah, I already, I know all the laws. I am safe. You know, I know how to use my weapons. And actually I grew up in Michigan. So, 
Um, I learned how to shoot at a young age because my dad loved guns and it was something we always did. So when we went to get our permits, our um, carry permits, which we don't need in this state, but we did it anyway. So we went to get our permits and it was the first time I'd gone shooting with Robert. We just went right away to get our permits instead of practicing. We didn't even practice. We get there and then um, we're, we're doing, we're at the shooting range and he looks at me and he goes, you're better than most of these men. <laughs> but that's something I was always good at. But yes, Charlie, you're right. In the event, even if you don't have a bunch of training. I agree. But I do. And what people don't know about me is that I regularly carry a 45. I don't carry a 9. Uh, I once at a gun show had a guy tell me, listen, honey, uh, girls carry nines, not 45s. And I looked at him and I said, well, it's a good thing I'm a woman. <laughs> not giving up my 45 for anything. Yeah, we, uh, we have, I have one of those too. Um, used to have an AK too. I kn we no longer have an AK. I'd like to get another one though. That one was fun. Anna, if you have a shooting range in your backyard, that sounds so fun. Except, do you know how expensive bullets are? Oh my God, ammo's so expensive. I that I would waste so much just because I think it's fun. Yeah, we do. Uh, my dad does have a reloader, and we have the, the reloading stuff, so we can go do that with his reloader. But yeah, it's a good idea to have a reloader, but still, it's still expensive. Sometimes he's like, "Hey, you want to go shooting?" And I'm like, "No, I, I don't. I don't feel like wasting money on bullets, <laughs> or wasting my bullets, I should say." And that is the number one reason. I carry a 45 because one bullet will drop somebody. A nine may take a couple. And Robert, he carries a nine. And it's funny because when people see us together, he's big and he's super strong and looks scary. But guess what? I'm the one you got to watch out for. He's nice. <laughs> And we joke about it all the time when we're out someplace. In fact, when we were in the ER, um, some guy was in there and he was very obviously on drugs and he was getting feisty and he grabbed Robert's shoulder and Robert's like, don't touch me, man. And another guy was like, stood up and he goes to walk toward him and Robert looks at him and he goes, my wife's got it. <laughs> Yeah, even though you reload, you still got to buy the stuff for it. You know? But heck, so many companies aren't even selling ammo anymore, and ammo's getting so outrageous and harder to find. All right, well, he doesn't seem to be stopping. How many weeds does he have in his yard? Judas Lapidus. Actually, they have a ton of, they have a ton of weeds in their yard. These people never take care of their lawn. <laughs> a 
and I love them to death. They're the best neighbors, but their lawn is always a mess. And that is why I put fake green in my front yard. So I wouldn't have to do that. Okay, Bricks and Beauty Homestead. Have a great night. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I will end it here because this isn't stopping. And um, I will talk to you all soon. Next, well, next month. We'll do another live next month. So thank you all for coming and hanging out with me. I love hanging out with you guys on lives. Have a great night. I'll see you next month.